Thank you, Mr. Chair. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I feel really privileged to be able to speak today here among all these distinguished speakers. And moreover, it's a particular pleasure, especially for me, since out of a pure coincidence, I can assure you this is a coincidence, uh, my presentation will uh, follow immediately after the presentation of Professor Soria, who happened to be my own mentor, although not much uh, older than me, my own mentor for my own project uh, for an ESMO annual grant. So what uh, the message I would like to give you today is that I would like to give you some practical tips from the fellows, po fellows point of view uh, that I believe will help you understand how you can make things work for you through ESMO or if you want, how can ESMO make things work for you. So my first tip, although it sounds very simple, is very essential. You have to search. If you don't search, you won't find anything. So 10 years ago, when I was a young intern in internal medicine, orientating to medical oncology, I decided out of plain curiosity to uh, search in Google if there is a society, a European society for medical oncology, without knowing anything about ESMO. So this is what I came up with, the European Society of Medical Oncology, and I immediately saw that there was a fellowship and award committee, a young medical oncologist committee, meaning that there were specific issues designated for young medical oncologists. I very soon realized that it was very easy to become an ESMO junior member. It is uh, quite simple. All you have to be is young to have a recommendation letter from a full ESMO member. It was and still is very cheap to become an ESMO junior member. And you uh, get very important opportunities regarding a number of educational activities of ESMO, like ESMO educational visits, ESMO fellowships, etc. So uh, one of the first uh, activities that I saw was the ESMO Translational Research Unit or Clinical Research Unit visit. Uh, at that time, it was at the beginning of this process. Uh, I saw that it was a very good opportunity to have an experience, a short experience on a European Center of Excellence focused on a specific topic, and there was a financial support for that. So I decided to apply, and this brings me to my second tip. Please apply, even if you have uh, poor CV, if you don't ha even if you don't have uh, uh, special qualifications in your CV, maybe especially then, because these activities are designated, are devoted to young medical oncologists at the beginning of their career. So I decided to apply in the first ESMO TRU visit that was to be held in Paris in March 2002 at the Institute Gustave Roussy. And at that time, the program was in its pilot phase uh, the resources were limited, and only two participants were allowed coming out from continents outside Europe. So my application was declined. And uh, I decided to contact the ESMO Secretariat and ask them if I could participate on my own expenses. And they said, of course you can. So this is uh, what I now consider a historical photo of the first ever conducted uh, ESMO TRU visit. As you can see, it's a very small group uh, uh, participating. The local hosts were uh, Jean-Charles Soria and Fabrice André and Ludovic Lacroix from the point of, uh, the lab of the laboratory. There was one colleague from India, one colleague from Argentina and myself. As you can see, it was a very small group. Uh, the focus was on DNA microarrays and it was then that I made my first acquaintance, my first contact with my future mentor, uh, Professor Soria, and I decided that I wanted to go back there someday and work with that person. So this brings me to my third tip. If your application is rejected, it's OK. Just try to improve your CV and reapply. So what I did is that uh, I uh, started participating in many ESMO activities, like Young Oncologist Breakfast, master classes, and I also qualified in the ESMO exams in Vienna back in 2004. And then I reapplied for the fourth year you visit in Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. This time I was accepted. As you can see, the program was, had already been expanded. There were 10 participants from eight countries. The focus was in immunobiology of cancer. Uh, it was a very valuable experience, both in terms of creating a professional network and also in terms of creating a social network. With many of these colleagues, uh, I am still in contact. So today, as you know, the program is very well established. There are many visits per year. 
many academic centers of excellence around Europe, and many participants had the opportunity to return to their host institutes and get actively involved in academic research projects. So this brings me to the second activity. It was then that I decided to go for a longer shot. Uh, three years after that first year you visit, I decided to try to obtain an uh, ESMO annual fellowship. Uh, you have to have some more qualifications to uh, qualify for this position. And most importantly, you need the letter of acceptance from the host institute along with the detailed program of the plant research project. So I contacted uh, Professor Soria and to my surprise, not only he remembered me from the TRU visit three years ago, but uh, he also sent me the initial project on lung cancer, which was my wish too, that I had to work on too, to facilitate my process within the ESMO application. So this brings me to my fourth tip. Do not hesitate to apply for an annual fellowship, even if it looks to you like a long shot. I would like to quote a phrase that Jean Charles used to use very often when we, during our meetings. He used to say, this is a win-win relationship. And it really is, because it means that both parts have to benefit from it. The applicant will obtain valuable experience from this, from working in the institute, in a, in a very, uh, uh, in an institute of excellence. And on the other hand, the institute will benefit from the applicant's work. Um, so uh, it, this was a very uh, precious experience, a very valuable experience. You have your own lab where you can work. Uh, my project was on translational research. The safety and security measures were very important. Uh, but what impressed me more was the teamwork. The creation of, uh, <laughs> it was the teamwork, <laughs> meaning that uh, when you work in a project like that, you have your own technician, you have your own pathologist, you have your own a statistician and you get together within regular time intervals to discuss all issues that may uh, come up with your project and these problems are resolved within these uh, uh, meetings. My project was a differential comparison of the signaling transduction pathways in lung adenocarcinoma in smokers and never smokers, a, a very hot topic at that time and even now. And this brings me to my fifth tip which is take the challenge of the proposed project, work hard on it, and even try to extend it. And just to give you an illustrative example, when I arrived there, uh, Professor Soria did not give me a complete list of the biomarkers that we have to study. He told me, Yanis, you will have to study all the biomarkers implicated in the pathogenesis of lung cancer in ever smokers. You will have to make your own drawings. And as you can see, these are very amateur drawings made by me in PowerPoint during the first weeks of my uh, fellowship, and then we will go together to the synthesis of these pathways and we'll uh, finalize the, the final synthesis of pathways, and then we will create, the, uh, with the help of the graphist, the pathway and the molecules that we will have to study in our project. So you have to create your own project, not to receive a project that is already made for you. Uh, the project also involved the reduction of a thesis in French, uh, an oral presentation, also in French, as you can see in front of the strict surveillance of my supervisor. Uh, there was also, we also had the chance to present our results in the ESMO uh, European Congress in Istanbul, back then in 2006, in the press conference session. There were also some really nice publications that came out from this work in uh, uh, clinical cancer research and a pertinent review in Nature Clinical Oncology. So this brings me to my last tip. Implement what you have learned. It's very important to continue the work after the fellowship is over. Apply the knowledge and experience you have obtained to your home country. So when I went back, I obtained my PhD in thoracic oncology. I now serve as a consultant medical oncologist and I'm head of the laboratory for translational research in my institution. Uh, I participate in the member of board of directors of the Hellenic Society of Medical Oncology and the Lung Cancer Working Group. And uh, I have been the first author of approximately 30 indexed publications on the topic of lung cancer. So my general tips are start from zero. It's okay. It's normal. Search for the grant or fellowship that fulfills best your career plan. Apply. It's the only way. Reapply in case of rejection after improving your qualifications, for example, by participating in ESMO activities. Work hard on your project, learn and offer. Create a human and professional network, and last but not least, implement what you have learned. 
You can find all this information in the ESMO website corner. Everybody knows that. In the ESMO newsletters, in the ESMO booths, in all ESMO affiliated activities. And also there are very nice and informative videos for that in Facebook, Twitter, and in YouTube. And this is the best picture I was able to obtain during one of my main, of my many night landings in Paris. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>